Welcome to Money Adventures with TK, a podcast for the ordinary young African who is determined to get their personal finances right. Willing to have a better relationship with your money? Well, this podcast is for you. All right, episode three. Can you believe the journey with Money Adventures has been nothing but short? What do they say? Nothing short of amazing. So, <laughs> so in episode three, I get to chat to a young professional with the most incredible work ethic. And when you see him angry, yo, I've never seen him angry until recently. <laughs> but when all is said and done, a very calm, down to earth guy with a passion for um, cinematography. I'll call it that. Yo, it took me a while to learn how to say cinematography. <laughs> but also a trained accountant. So, moment of that day, ladies and gentlemen, I get to speak to a young professional who is really building and working hard to build a name for himself in the industry. Like I say, I never introduce my guests, but allow them to introduce themselves for reasons that you know. If you don't know, go back to episode one and then you'll understand. So in studio today, I have a gentleman by the name Nero. And I'm going to leave it at that. Nero, good afternoon and welcome to Money Adventures. Hi, good afternoon, TK. Yes, who is Nero? Tell us a bit more about who Nero is. Nero was born and raised in Lesotho. (laughs) And Nero is an accountant. And also happens to have great passion for the creative industry. Um... (laughs) <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's it. Passion for the creative industry. So let's yeah. start a bit there mm. for our conversation. Mm. So you have a passion for the creative industry, but you are trained as an accountant. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Have you ever actually worked in accounting? Yeah, I did. Uh, that was about, um, I think that was two years ago. Uh-huh. I think that was two years ago with the Ministry of Finance. Um, we used to work in the central payments office uh, where we process uh, all payments done by the government of Lesotho. Mm-hmm. So that's where I worked um, professionally. Professionally, yeah, I like yeah, that. Yes, okay. yeah. All right, so now you work for the government, which is yeah, an extreme spot. <laughs> well, at least for me, that is, you know, I've been in corporate, uh, private sector. So now you work for government, and then you've got this passion. When did the creative industry start luring you in? Um, it so happened that um, I had a bit of money at some oh. point. <laughs> so yeah. uh, it so happened that uh, I was stuck between uh, get a nice car maybe or reinvest the money in, in a project that was going to make me a bit of money mm-hmm. on the side. Um, so... I met a guy I used to school with, um, so we decided that we're going to start a company, a technology company, because he's an IT professional, I'm an accountant, so maybe that was going to work, me doing the financials, he doing the actual work. Mm. So we built um, the first uh, tourism app for Lesotho. That was Lesotho Gaida um, in collaboration with the LTDC. <clears throat> That's where the money came from. Mm. So, <clears throat> so we decided on a project that was going to make us a bit of money. So we went into photography and videography. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew very little about photography then. So you're not trained as a photographer at all? No. Ah. No. I have no formal training. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So uh, uh, where did you have the confidence? Because a lot of, many a time uh, we walk in into spaces that we aren't familiar with. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just, I look at you and I thought you actually had training as a a photographer. Yeah. Let alone a videographer. Mm -hmm. Right. So tell us a bit more about. (laughs) So I get you now you have the equipment to to get in to the industry and do some work. Yeah. 
So the very first challenge that we had was, man, how are we gonna make money if we don't have clients? Now, it becomes a chicken and egg story because yeah. in order to get clients, you need to have done some work, True. some good work. True. And I think one of our first major clients was a girl I went to school with. She was getting married. Oh. So she happened to know that I had camera equipment. So she booked us for the wedding and we had to drive to Le Rive to shoot the wedding. Uh, it went relatively well. Relatively well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for who we were. Yeah. Then. So that's where it all began. Now, my partner was based in Bloom. Mm-hmm. And there was a nightclub or rather a lounge that was opening up and they were in need of photography services. That was our second major client. That's where it all began. Now, the equipment lives in Bloom. I'm in Maseru, in Lesotho. So uh, now and then I'd get the equipment delivered to me, the site, so that I could learn. I got to learn how to use the equipment. So I get on YouTube. I get on YouTube and go on like how to use a Nikon D5600. Yeah. So they show you around the menu. Oh, this is how you do this. This is how you do that. And that's where it began. Now you have the equipment right here on your desk. And someone on YouTube is telling you, oh, no, if you want a picture like this, if you want the results like this, this is what you do. That's how you get to learning. But then again, later on, I took a course, um, a short course on LinkedIn learning, um, how to use a camera, how to use a DSLR camera. So they just give you the basics. Mm. Everything else you learn by applying the basics. You learn by trying to push the boundaries of what you think you know now after a bit of training interesting that you may you've mentioned a lot of valuable insights which brings a whole list of questions mm-hmm. firstly going back to the wedding in the rebe mm-hmm. how did you know how to price did you even know how to go about the pricing <clears throat> now you go around asking people who are already <laughs> in the industry <laughs> how, how, how do you charge this how do you arrive at a price that a client is willing to pay for for the kind of pictures that you have? Yeah. And they're like, oh, no, the market average uh, goes anywhere between 2,500 and 5,000. We're like, okay, that works. That works. But we're going to start with the very lowest uh, acceptable fee. Ah, interesting. Yeah. And what was the reason behind starting with the lowest level the confidence there because know, you know you're, <laughs> <laughs> you know you're not good at this. you know you're not good at this you know that okay i'm just i just happen to have this equipment here yeah i just happen to have these cameras yeah so get the least amount of money <laughs> possible For a certain period of time yeah because you know that if i mess it up I might have to pay back the money. <laughs> so if I'm going to pay back the money, better it be the lowest amount of money. Wow. Yes. Second question that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. So now you're collaborating with a partner in a different town, mm-hmm. let alone a different country. Yeah. So what are the complexities that come with working with somebody? Um, it, it, it happens quite... It happened quite a lot where... He had a booking in Bloom and I had a booking in Maseru. Now he has to ship uh, or to courier the, the equipment to me. Now the problem with couriering such equipment is that um, there's the issue with customs because you cannot uh, just ship uh, business assets across the border. You have to declare such assets and pay a fee to be able to get across the border. <laughs> with them so uh it happened quite a number of times and then we had to come up with uh, a solution for this mm-hmm. um get another camera or um find someone that's going to be able to ship the equipment to us uh or ship the equipment and make it look like the equipment is owned by an individual it's going to be used on a personal um, 
project not on a business project mm. <clears throat> so that's one two um if i have camera equipment here and <laughs> i have a partner somewhere else who can't verify my bookings how does he know how many bookings <laughs> i've done in any given yes. accountability that was the major problem yeah, that was the major problem because uh there was a point in time where um it came to my knowledge that there was about a hundred and something thousand in Maloti that was missing a hundred thousand a hundred thousand wait a minute how kind of money were you guys making <laughs> <laughs> that comes from having a big client oh wow like I said in the beginning because oh our, wow our second client, client yeah yeah our second client was um, a long term client like yeah like you mentioned yeah that. because they're in constant need of photography i mean if there's an event on thursday friday saturday sunday yeah. they need and they pay monthly my goodness so it's a bit of a lump sum it's, so the accountability and yeah. the transparency. now the problem is accountability so what would you say is your money story your whether it's a good or a bad thing what's your money story a mistake you've made um a big win you've made you know i think um relating that to what i've just said about accountability it's i think that was the major money mistake i made where we didn't have in place a framework or a system for managing our bookings that was going to make it easy to account for it because um i carry in accounting or in audits there's always going to be inherent risk for being in a particular sort of business so now in this type of business the inherent risk is that there's going to be some bookings that are not accounted for mm. like you got a tiny <laughs> bookings got big bookings as long as you don't know that i did the job it never happened and 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 it, it's become susceptible to a lot of fraud and yes, you yes. know mis uh, appropriation of funds and the like yeah because i was pumping money into the project from my funds from my pocket because we needed to keep getting better equipment over time but now i wasn't making money out of it true and again for me brings up the, the the question that comes to mind is career which is your profession or rather let me say your profession versus your passion yeah. you know so you keep on pumping money what was funding was it your actual profession or what was funding money my and actual profession is that important and why is it important would you say ah uh, i don't know whether that's important but from where i stand right now i think that was important because um had i not pumped more money or more funds into the project i don't think that titan lens would exist today mm. i don't think that it would because if after finding that there's a lot of money that went missing then go uh, practically up reasonably it's it's reasonable to say that i can't i'm gonna abandon this project yeah because i cannot manage it in a way that's gonna make me money but i kept pump, pumping in more money and then what i did was um i had to make sure that it, the equipment went back from bloom to my mm-hmm. which is where it lives now yeah this is how you came to know about titan of course and i love the quality i mean if you haven't seen any of those check out my instagram the guys the pictures i'm getting every single day so what does what does the future look like for titan lens I think Titan Lens is growing exponentially. Mm. But I think that I might need to get um more people to work with a because team. yeah, a team, an actual team that's going to work Titan Lens. And what kind of skills do you look for when you're building a team? Um I need efficiency. Efficiency. I need accountability. Accountability. Yes. And ethics. Ethics, work ethics. I mean, you're an accountant after all. Yeah. You're an account- and what does 2021 look like for not even Titan Lens, but for Nail as an individual? Um, how do I say this? 
I think it looks good. Is that enough to say? <laughs> Is that what you're looking for? But I have no I idea. You can tell me whatever you want to tell me. Uh, I think it's 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 looking very good. It's looking very good considering where we come from. It's looking very good uh, seeing that we are getting more and more clients yeah. under Titan Lens. And I'm getting more and more clients for my profession. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're balancing the two. And that's the most difficult part. And how do you, well, we have less than a minute left. Like, you know what? So <laughs> I think that's a conversation for uh, Escapes with TK on my YouTube channel. Yes. Trying to find that balance to say, how do you balance juggling um, your professional clients? And well, you're touching clients are also very professional. So no, thank you so much for coming through to talks. <laughs> Too many platforms of balance. Money adventures with TK. Oh my goodness! Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I always say on my show, or well, with episode three of Money Adventures, is money is an adventure. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do with it really counts. Let's enjoy it. Let's save it. Let's build it. Let's grow it. And but most importantly, let us have fun. Thank you for having. Me. Let us have fun. It's been a pleasure. Looking forward to episode four of Money Adventures with TK. Thank you. Love your money. Money is amazing. Cheers, Cheers guys. Cheers. You've been listening to Money Adventures with TK. We want to hear from you. Don't be shy to like, comment, and share. Money's an adventure. Let's enjoy the ride.